Christina wanted to start taking down our Christmas decorations this weekend. I would not let her. Um, I needed a bit more Christmas. And um, we had lights, we have snow, we have all the gifts. All that season feels like it's, it's wrapping up and I don't want to let it go because as soon as we let it go, it's going to just be dark and cold instead of Christmassy. Um, I checked the sun up and sundown times. They're, they're 8 a.m. and 4.30 right now. So if you go to a normal job, you don't actually get to see the sunlight. I'm sorry. Um, but it got me thinking about the importance of light. Um, one of the Christmas presents that we got this year was um, we put in some new lights in our kitchen. Because our, our house, if you've ever seen it, is tons and tons of windows and skylights. Um, which is amazing for natural light. But when there isn't any natural light, um, there's nothing. <laughs> and so um, our prep area, you, you couldn't see while you were cooking. And um, it's a pretty dangerous thing to cook in the dark. And <laughs> we just got new knives also for Christmas. So <laughs> we figured we better put in some lighting. Um, but I think it's, it's dangerous to go through life equally so um, without light. When I came to faith at 19, um, my life was mostly a process at that point of trying to figure out things that would bring me true fulfillment, true joy, true happiness. Um, but I didn't have a clear sense of how things worked or a clear direction on how to go about it. So it was mostly trial and error. And um, unfortunately, the trial and error led to um, what I can only describe as attempting to navigate furniture in a house that is pitch black that you've never been in. Um, I was stumbling over things, knocking things over, making choices I thought were good choices, and then finding out that they weren't good choices. And um, the worst part is I wasn't the only one getting bruised up. It, it actually hurt a lot of other people around me, um, like my family, which, which um, I deeply regret. Um, when we make decisions, even now, like without enough light, without enough information, without enough advice, we usually end up making poor decisions and um, we've all experienced uh, what those mistakes can lead to. And um, meeting Jesus, putting my life in his hands was really like turning on the light for me. Um, things came into focus. Um, the big picture came into focus. I no longer felt like I was stumbling and I had a good path to walk on. And that path, um, the more I explore it, uh, following Jesus, um, affects everything. It affects um, how I go about being married. It affects how I go about working. It affects um, who I am. I have an 18-year-old niece living with me who is a ton like me. Um, and it's a little scary at times because I can see how much of myself um, is in her. And I'm so thankful to God for life because of how it's changed me over the years. And um, I don't know about how you felt about this year, but this year, uh, at the end of the year, I always kind of take an inventory and I feel like there's new darkness. Um, there's new darkness in our country, there's new darkness in our society, and um, there's still darkness in me that I am struggling with. But um, I am kind of in awe still of how divided our country feels right now. Um, and divided, I, I wasn't there for the 60s. I didn't get to see the civil rights movement and all that led up to that. Um, but it feels like there's a massive divide. We're divided between rich and poor. We're divided between black and white. We're divided between gender and sexuality. And um, it's hard to find the hope for how that's going to fix itself. Um, we have experienced tremendous acts of violence this year, unlike any that I remember. And um, I'm, I'm so ready to see something brighter. I want 2018 to honestly be a brighter place, and not just in the world, but in me. Um, I see my struggles with confidence. I see my struggles with being good enough, and I want those things to get better. And it hasn't all been bad. Um, think about where our church has gone. Man, we have gone through two moves, more or less. Um, we have gone through a change of leadership, uh, we have had so much go on at this church that each one of those things feels like it should have taken away and what it's done is it's actually made us better and stronger. Um, and so God is up to things and he's making things brighter. Um, I look at how Christina and I are, are doing and how we're dealing with our needs and um, I'm impressed at what God can do, honestly. 
Um, but I want to see that stuff continue. I don't want to just settle for another year like the one that we just had. So, um, so if I'm going to have a brighter world, um, I think it's going to have to be involved with getting on the same plan as God. Um, I want to see what God can do in our lives, in our church, and in our world, in our society. And so, um, with that, I want to read my favorite version of the Christmas story. Um, it's a strange one. Oh, there goes the whole sermon. Fair enough. Thankfully, I have lovely people to make up my inevitableness. That's a sermon in itself, by the way. Um, by the way, when I fail miserably, look who's there for me. Can I get that back? <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, Dave. You're the best. Um, my favorite version of the Christmas story is, is John chapter 1. And it says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who do receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, not of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory. It's the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. God, um, thank you for coming. Thank you that we can celebrate your coming. Thank you for being the light of the world. We need light very badly. So meet us where we're at, God. Speak to us where we're at. Help us to set a pattern for the new year that gets us going in the right direction. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We love you. Amen. <coughs> what a gift. Jesus, the light of the world, comes uh, into us. As Jonathan, with that poem, uh, showed us, what a crazy thing that God would dive so deep to be with us. Um, and the cool thing is when you receive Jesus, when, when he comes into your life, when you follow him, you have him and with it you have light. Um, this has become especially uh, poignant to me. In, in my house, uh, it's a very long driveway with no lights on it. And it wasn't a big deal in the summer, but now I take the dog for a walk and it is pitch black. Uh, and it's quite hard to see. And so another Christmas present we had to buy ourselves was headlamps. Do you know how silly <laughs> I look walking my dog with a headlamp on? Um, but I have to wear this headlamp. And um, Christina and I often go out for walks together. And um, if the dog or Christina decides that she no longer wants to be walking with me or wants to go check the mail or whatever, uh, I have to go with her because I'm the one wearing the stupid headlamp. Because um, we cannot function without um, somebody there to bring some light. And uh, it just reminded me how much I need Jesus to do everything with me. And how much it changes things. Um, if I go about being married, if I go about the disagreements that Christina and I will inevitably have this year, I can go about them either trusting myself and I will stumble around in the dark and make a mess of things. Or I can ask Jesus to help me and show me some path. And I'm bound to end up with something lighter. I can do work. I can do politics. I can do everything. Finances. What does it look like to say, Jesus, can you help me figure this thing out? It's going to take a special kind of attention to Jesus. Both personally as we go through our days and knowing what he is he's about, knowing his life inside and out. Um, but if we do this, there's a, a very special gift that happens. Um, 
John 8, 12. I love how the message puts it. It says this. Jesus once again addressed them, and he said, I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. God becomes a man, not just to be light, not just to show us what it's like to be life, um, not just to show us a pattern that we can follow, but instead to give us plenty of light to live in. Um, my brother and I used to play in our backyard. We had a basketball hoop set up there, and there was like one light overhanging from the deck, and our basketball game shrunk down to the amount of light that you had, because you just couldn't hit a shot further out that you got from it. And so pretty much it was like four feet. And my brother's five years older than me. I don't remember winning any of those games. But um, when we have plenty of light to live in, it actually expands our world. And I think, honestly, my first impression of Christianity was that it would limit my life. That suddenly a whole bunch of things would be the wrong thing to do, and I had to stay within a very small confine of what it was like to live life. Um, and I wanted the freedom to do whatever I wanted. But the reality is that um, Jesus gives us plenty of light to live in. He gives us plenty of space in which to experience what an abundant life is. And when we go outside of that space, we lose life. And life gets less rich and um, less abundant. So God came down to us in order to give us space for life. What a gift. Um, and if we walk with Jesus' light, we are going to find that we treat ourselves differently, we treat others differently, we're more generous, we're more truthful. Um, the ego gets less and less important, necessary. And I have plenty of selfishness that needs to go somewhere else and be lit up. Um, and God can do that. So if we want to see what God's like, if we want to sort out uh, what Jesus is like, um, Let's take a look at him and see how the light of the world lived. And then try to do likewise. Um, that's a pretty simple way to go about it. But I honestly think that God has something even better in mind. Christmas is an amazing miracle. Um, but what if there was something even better than Christmas? And I stumbled across it um, in Matthew chapter 5. Thank you. Um, Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says an incredible thing. Um, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. He gathered with a bunch of his followers. They were sitting on a hillside and, and he says these words to them. You are the light of the world. But I thought Jesus was the light of the world. What if God actually wants us to have him live inside of us and then for us to be the light of the world. It's a crazy thing. There's a lot of messages that you will hear about who you are this year. Um, you will maybe get patted on the back at work or, or by somebody and you will take that compliment in and go, huh, maybe I can do that. I mean, I am a good musician. Maybe I am uh, a good person to talk to. Uh, it, but you will also hear messages that tell you that you are not enough that something isn't right, or that something is, is broken. And in the midst of all of this, um, we'll probably take that into, and this year will be a struggle. But underneath all of that, God says some stuff about us. Um, and because it's God, he's the one who actually knows us, inside and out, and his word is absolutely trustworthy. It doesn't have blind spots. It doesn't have partial truths. It doesn't have anything cushioned for self-gain in it. God says some stuff, and one of the things he says about us is that we're the light of the world. Um, those of us who have decided to follow Jesus have his spirit put inside of us, and it's not just for our benefit, it's for the world. So we become lighthouses for the world. Which means, uh, if our workplace is going to be a brighter place, it's going to be because we're lighting it up. 
if our families are going to be a brighter place, it's going to be because we are lighting it up. If we're um, going to be a better husband or wife or friend or neighbor, it's going to be because we are interacting with Jesus enough that he can light us up and then we can be that for other people. It even works uh, in terms of, of larger areas. What about our city? Uh, Christina and I are struggling to figure out if we belong in Lake Forest Park. It's a weird place, Lake Forest Park. <laughs> like they were a part of Seattle or Shoreline or whatever city that was, and then they broke off because they love their trees. And what we've learned is that they have these huge lots. They don't actually like to get to know each other, but they will fiercely protect the trees in the neighborhood. Which means if you cut down a tree on your lot, the neighbors will come over then to make sure that you did it properly and are replanting a tree in its place. Um, because there can't be any less trees in Lake Forest Park. Um, every Saturday, there's protesters there. Whether there's something to protest or not, they gather to protest. It's, it's quite a fascinating little place. It has a great farmer's market. But we're trying to decide, does this fit us? Is this us? Are we ready to become deeply protective of our neighbor's trees and not care about our neighbors? But maybe instead of us actually blending into Lake Forest Park, what if we're supposed to be like there? For um, the last six months, we've been batting around the idea of what would it mean to have a soup night? Um, what would it mean to have neighbors over just to get to know them and just to have them over and let them know that we care about them. That sounds like life to me. Um, that is something that I would like to do. Oh, I threw away the most part of my sermon. <laughs> you guys are really getting a good one today. Um, <laughs> fantastic. So here's my tendency that I've figured out. I like God to move things in my life. I want him to fix things. Um, when things get challenging, I would like him to fix the circumstances. So, uh, I want him to fix my co-workers. I want him to fix my neighbors. I wish that they would come over and greet me. I've invited them. I mean, um, I want to see business places more ethical. I want the things around me to change. Um, but what if God's plan is actually to change me and then to have me be a source of change for those things? When I was a brand new Christian, I came to um, faith in a house of a pastor's family, and the matriarch of the family was a lady named Kareen Smith, a wonderful lady. And I asked her once what she prayed about. I was curious about, what does it mean to pray? What do we pray for? Um, and, and she said, mostly I pray for my family. And then she made a really important clarification. She said, I mostly pray that I can be a better mom to my kids, and that I can be a better wife to my which it's so easy for me to pray about God to fix Christina, my church, my niece, rather than asking for God to fix me. But God actually wants to brighten us up and then take us somewhere else so that we can actually bring light there. Sharon is going to be a saint and help us fix our dark um, driveway by putting out landscape lighting so that I don't have to wear my stupid headlamp when I go on my dog walks. I'm very excited about this possibility. And so the plan right now, as far as I understand it, I'm, I'm not a landscape lighting expert, but my plan is to buy like 20 of these lights, right? And then um, I'm going to space them out down the driveway uh, till we get down to the street light. And um, if I can do this at the right disbursement of light spots and have the right number of lights, then I may not have to wear my stupid headlamp, which I would greatly appreciate at this point. Um, I think that's actually God's plan for the world. And it would be really dumb if I buy all these lamps and then shove them in one corner of my lot and have the brightest corner of a garden ever. Like, that sounds kind of interesting to me because I'm a little ADD, but I don't think it's a long-term solution. And maybe what God wants to do is to have us spend time with him to get lit up and then to just get spread out through the city. And then what it says happens when that happens is they will see your good deeds and they will glorify your father in heaven. And then they will become light bearers too. God's plan for transformation 
in us and in the world is to light us up and then to spread us out. And the reality is, this isn't just for the world, it's, it's also for us. Um, when you have a dark spot in your life, one of the best things you can do is find a Christian brother or sister that you trust and begin to crack the door open a little bit. And then you can start to have a little bit of light come in and you can figure out that these people will be there for you. And it will change things. I want to close with, with going back to my first um, encounter with Christianity. My grandfather was a pastor, um, a wonderful, wonderful guy. And um, I would go over to his house and I didn't care about his faith at the time at all. Um, as a matter of fact, I kind of just thought he was dumb for having it. But he always had this uh, drawer of toys for us. And I want you to picture like the Oriental Trading Company's faith page. It was a whole bunch of just random little Jesus junk. Um, and he would always give me a toy and I thought it was the coolest thing. And then I would always dig through there and what I looked for was, um, was this actually. I brought them for us. Um, here, I'm going to pass these up. Christina, can you be my lovely assistant? No, you're just <laughs> Dave's my lovely assistant. <laughs> um, glow in the dark crosses. I thought they were the coolest thing. <laughs> of all the toys in my grandpa's thing, glow in the dark crosses were way better than the felt crosses to color or anything like that. So I get these glow in the dark crosses, and then I would immediately grab it out of the cupboard. <laughs> And I would run to the darkest place I could possibly find in the house to see if it was working. And it would work for all of about mm, 10, 15 seconds, because it had been sitting in a drawer for a long time. Uh, I didn't bother stopping between the drawer and the darkest place in the house. Um, so it would go dark pretty fast, but my, thankfully my grandfather lived in Santa Monica, California, which is a usually bright and sunny place. And so the first thing I would do after I went into the dark closet, realized that it was going dim, was I would run and um, go outside. And I would hold it up in the air, just like this, thinking that somehow got it closer to the sun, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and it would get lit up really bright. And then I would run to the darkest place in the house again. And I would do this over and over and over. The New Year's is all about setting up new rhythms in our lives. The disruption of Christmas is coming to an end. We're about to have new patterns. That means you're about to have crazy new patterns. Um, what if this pattern involved finding a pattern of getting lit up by Jesus, spending time with the Lord, and then going out purposefully into really dark places just so that we could be light? That's what John, um, later on, as he's giving his last words in 1 John to, to some Christians about what it's going to be looking like to live. Here's what he says. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and we rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And this is how love will be made complete among us, so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment. In this world, we will be like Jesus. Know and rely on the love of God. <clears throat> what would this year look like to go into it knowing and relying on the love of God? That means spending time with God and saying, God, I need your help with every area of my life and letting him charge you up and make you really bright and then going out into the world and living like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Love that less than perfect neighborhood, family, workplace. Love others like God loves us without limit, without condition, with great grace, with great truth, finding new creative ways to shine. 2018 can be a much brighter place if we do this get charged up, spend time with the Lord, and then go out purposefully into the dark. And let God into the darkness that is in us and in the places we will go. And more and more we can see what 2018, how bright it can be. <coughs> Happy New Year, y'all. Let's pray.
God, thank you that you are up to something. Thank you that that something is bringing light. We want life. We want abundant lives. And so we are willing to set down our ability to run our own life. Lord, you become the Lord of our life. You give us light, charge us up, and then send us out, disperse us, help us to occupy the places we are instead of just wish for them to change. Bring your light and life into us. We love you. Amen.